Welcome to Creativity with Don Allen 3rd Live. Today I'm going to show you how to sculpt this inside of Gravity Sketch in just four easy steps. Step one, how do we make this little guy? We're going to go ahead and grab our tools and go to our primitives. And I'm going to choose the subdivision beta. And we're going to grab just a good old, good old square cube. And we just right click and drag our uh, trigger. And then we have a cube. Now we can grab this cube and we can hit that blue edit button. And if we switch to subdivisions, we can grab it and make it a little bit shorter. Then we can turn on subdivisions and now it's rounded. And if we increase the subdivisions, we can smooth it out. See how it's very similar. It's getting very similar. Now you can actually move these if you want, but for now, we're just going to leave it on there right there. We can increase the subdivision a lot if you want it to be really smooth. And one more piece here, we grab it and hit that color wheel with your thumb. And it can drag down for darker colors and drag forward for lighter colors. So you can kind of, you know, jump in, in and out of that spectrum. So I'm just going to go with a nice light yellow kind of egg color. And there you go. Next, we need to draw the, the face. So to do that, uh, we're going to click on our, our tools and go straight to our stroke tool. Then we're going to switch the stroke color to something darker. And then we're going to click the stroke one more time and turn on planar. And this lets you draw on a flat plane like this. And so I'm just going to uh, double click our, and just double check the stroke one more time. We also want to set this to point mode so that we have more control. And we just do a single click with the trigger, move our hand to somewhere else, click again with our trigger, move again, click with the trigger. And then to close it, you actually hit the left trigger. There you have it, so you got this shape. And this is pretty similar to the eye, both eyes and both uh, and the single mouth. So what I can do to shrink it is grab the two grips and shrink those together and make it really small. And then we can grab that here and place it, uh, well, before you place it, to duplicate, you grip with this grip finger, and then you can press, uh, press the trigger button to copy. And then when you release that grip, it pastes that copy. Pretty neat. I'm gonna grab this aisle again, and uh, same trick, we're gonna have it selected. And then now we have copy, and we can like tilt the mouth if we wanna make it cuter. Now we're gonna grab all, uh, all three of these shapes. This is our sphere of influence. We can grab them all. And if you hit that purple button, it groups them. So now it's one object. So we can take this group and just kind of squeeze it together on the face, let it calculate. And now we have that. Step one, done. Step two, how do we get this thing? Well, we're gonna start off with that same tool again. We're gonna hit that purple button and then grab our primitives. And I'm gonna grab a cube and turn on subdivisions. Then we're gonna right, uh, use our right trigger to um, scale out a cube. We're gonna select it with our grip and hit the blue button. Then we're gonna push down so that it's like a pancake again, and then release. Now this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete one of these faces. So I'm gonna select it, hit the edit button. And if we hover our sphere of influence, you can actually grab individual faces, which is pretty cool. And if you grab this one here and then hit the minus key, it opens up that box. You can see that? So now it's like an opening here. And now that we have this, uh, we can go to the other sides and kind of just squeeze it together. And then I'm gonna hit the check mark, grab the whole object again. And I need to elongate it, so I'm gonna select again, hit that blue button, and just drag it out. If you hit the right trigger around an edge, it adds an edge loop. And we can pull on those loops to make a petal shape. I'm gonna grab my sphere of influence to these points here and just drag these out. And then use that joystick to make it a little bit thinner at the end here. And you can tilt this and rotate this. It's really cool, but I'm just going to do that. And last but not least, I'm going to turn on subdivisions. And now you have this nice rounded shape. And we can grab, oops, we can hit the check mark. We can grab the shape with the grip. And then with the grab, you can hit that color wheel and then find the color flower that you want. So let's do a pink flower here. All right, so that's one. Now, that's great. But we need, we need that middle shape. Well, it's going to be very similar to step one. So we could just copy it or... Let's just draw it again. We're gonna grab a cube. Great, uh, we have it here. We just draw a cube out, take it, edit it, squeeze it down. Then uh, we take this one, turn on the subdivisions, turn them up a little bit higher. And then we're gonna go to our edit mode and then just pull on this and then use our joystick to uh, make, the, make it a little bit more rounded. And to make it a little bit more of a flat front, we could just add another edge loop there. You can see how that kind of flattens the front. So this is gonna become the center of the flower. And then we can just hold this and duplicate it with the trigger to add all the leaves, all the petals of our structure. And if it's hard to grab, you can just release, 
use your grip again and then place it on the last couple here. Nice. And there you have it. Step two. And then you can again, you can grab this whole thing, grab both grips to shrink it down to get it to the right scale. Okay, great. Now we're on step three. How do you make this thing? Well, it's, it's cool. I'll show you. We click on this button, hit this thing, and we're going to actually go to our stroke tool this time. And you're going to bring up your plane. You'll need to use the trigger button to uh, press the plane. And first, we're going to sculpt the leaves. So I'm actually going to grab... Actually, I take it back. We're going to sculpt the stem first. So uh, I'm just going to get a green color here. And if, you, if the plane's here, you can actually turn off this plane. So if I hit that purple button, click back on the stroke, we can turn off planar. So now we're kind of free to draw this anywhere. And we can just uh, use our left and right slide on the joysticks to change the scale. And we can click, move your cursor, click again, move your cursor in 3D space, click again, click again, click again. So very easily you can make really cool shapes. And at any point you can hit the left trigger to end it. And then you can edit this all entirely. So I can grab this here, hit the edit button, and you still have plenty of you know, ability to change any part of the curve. Uh, very friendly, very accessible, very, very nice tool. And you, you can delete stuff too. You can select it and then hit that minus button and then it's gone. Cool, so you got that stem, great. You can also go to the very bottom here and with your bottom selected, you can slide right and left to taper the edge. So that's a really cool effect for lots of reasons, but we'll just do that here. So now it kind of gets a little bit wider towards the base like plants do. All right, now to make those leaves, what we're gonna do for the leaves is click back on here. We're gonna use a new tool called the volume tool. And with the volume tool, we're gonna turn on the point mode and we're gonna turn on planar. So this lets us actually create the volume of a leaf. And so I'm just clicking on here and making different points. Kind of trying to mirror my, my strokes here and get something right around here. And we'll just kind of close that volume here. Now, if it's not closing, uh, what you might want to do, oops, let's click that again. So just kind of clicking up here. If it's not closing, you might press on that purple line and then it closes it. So there you have it, we have a leaf, but we need those lines on the leaf. And I think you already know how we're gonna do it. We're gonna grab that stroke tool again, but this time we wanna turn on planar. So it's on that flat plane, you can see it there. We're gonna darken it by pushing down on the color palette. And we can do a left click and move our cursor. And then a, uh, sorry, a, that was a right click and then a left click to end it. And then we'll do, we'll, we will repeat this. We do a right click, left click to end, right click, left click to end. That was a little too fast, we do go again. Right click, left click to end. And we can still adjust this very uh, easily. So if we need to, we can grab this and move points around and be very precise if we choose. Then we're gonna grab all of this and hit the group button so that this becomes one piece. And we can just place it onto our leaf, resize it, fit it how we need. Maybe I want it to be kind of split in between. There you go, so you get a little bit of front, a little bit on the back. I'm gonna grab this leaf now and hit the group button. And then we can take this leaf and resize it by grabbing our grips and placing it. And with it placed, you hit the trigger to duplicate. And now we have our really friendly low poly leaves all over our, uh, our plant. Okay, step four. How do we make a weird shape like this, like a flower pot? Well, I'll show you. We're gonna grab the revolve tool, whole new tool here. Grab the revolve tool, and we're gonna turn on to point mode. I, I really do love point mode. And we're gonna switch the color to a flower pot color. And you're probably noticing the orientations on this weird line, and, and it's kind of, it's not like straight up and down. So what you want to do is use the left trigger, and you'll see a, a gray line appear. And this is going to be where it's going to be the axis that it starts to sculpt on. You see what I mean? So I'm just going to kind of line it up right about here. And then you can release it. Now you're free to kind of draw. And we're just going to press once, move up, click again, move up, click again. Great, move up, and then move out. Move up, move up, and we're just doing little baby clicks, little baby clicks. And we're just gonna go all the way into the flower pot here, make a couple more edges, and then we can kind of close it off for the most part. 
and then we hit the left trigger to end it. And so now we have a flower pot. Again, you can edit this now, so we can hit our edit tool. And you can see that these are all the points that are defining that. So I'm gonna rotate it around so I have them a little bit more accessible. You can adjust these accordingly to make it kind of any flower pot shape you want. You can grab multiple points at a time to make your work even faster. And yeah, this you know these shapes are gonna influence your, your pottery. Then we need to make a dark inside. For that, we're gonna use a new tool as well. Uh, we could use this again, but instead we're gonna use the primitives. And then we're just gonna grab a regular old plane. And we're gonna make that plane the color of mud. And we'll just draw a square. We got the square, you can place it right in the middle here. And then to get that square to be rounded, we select it and hit the edit button and then turn on subdivisions. And I'll set it up to a little bit higher. And now we can just grab these points and just kind of hide them into our object. And we can move it down if we want the dirt to be a little bit lower to give it more space for the, um, the flower pots. So I'm just going to move it down pretty low and make sure it's not coming out of the sides like right here. I'm just going to push that in, rotate around again. Good. So we just got a little bit of dirt there. I might just uh, go in the pot real quick and just move it up a little higher. Cool. Take a look, we've made all our parts. We did step one, step two, step three, step four. Now we can combine them. We can grab this piece and we grab this piece. So we'll just go ahead and put that flower right there. Oops. I like to group things, so I'm gonna grab this and hit the group button. And I'm gonna grab this, hit the group button. I'm gonna grab all of this. Oops. Ah, all of this and hit the group button grab this one and hit the group button. And now we can just put, uh, put together our pot, our potted plant. So I'm just gonna place that there, grab these two, maybe slide this this way, and then grab our flower, place it here. Maybe I'll make the flower really big, really cartoony, really happy. Uh, it's kind of covering up our plants too much though, so I'm just gonna maybe make it a little bit smaller than that. Now we'll grab a little happy face and slap it on there. Amazing. And then if you want to break your group, you can select it and then hit the purple break button. And this lets you go back in and grab individual elements again. So if I want to grab this leaf, I can uh, I can do that and like re you know replace it. Maybe it makes more sense to fan it up this way or something. Maybe I want to grab this leaf as well and kind of just orient it at a different angle here. Same idea with this leaf. Cool. And then we can grab that whole thing, that whole entire plant. Just grab a whole thing like this, group this, and now we can just duplicate our whole flower, rescale it, and have little baby flowers uh, coming out of here as well. I'll just do two. Yeah, that looks good. All right, there you have it, folks. Let's compare the before and after. Oops. I'm going to grab all of this and hit group. I'm just going to compare that to here. All right, there we go. So that was the before, that's the after. Now you know how to use Gravity Sketch to make some cool 3D models for AR, for VR, for real time, for game engines. Uh, this is going to be a really cool asset. I'm going to be bringing this into Substance and do a much better paint job on it, maybe something more painterly. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.